Given A, B is congruent to C, D, all right, you guys, and given B, C is congruent to A, D, so you guys prove that A, B, C is congruent to C, D, A. All right, when I'm being asked to prove two triangles are congruent, I'm having four major thoughts in mind. S, 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 A, S, A, S, A, and A, A, S. And what I want to do is I want to try to find a way to come up with either one of these four to show that these guys are congruent. Well, looking at this picture, I have two sides already, which eliminates U2. Now, can I find a way to show that angles are congruent? No. I don't see a third side. Oh, except the fact that AC is like a common side with both of these triangles. So technically, right there and I could use SSS. So this is a three-step proof, proof, <laughs> proof maybe, so let's get started. What is the given? All right, AB is congruent to CD, and BC is congruent to AD, given. Side, side. My third side is to show that AC is congruent to itself. So AC is congruent to AC. Now, whenever you say that a side is congruent to itself or an angle is congruent to itself, you are using the reflexive property. Now that I have all three of my sides, I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And the reasoning for that is SSS, side, side, side. Pretty quick proof, not so bad. Very intro to triangle congruence proofs. I like it. Given AB is parallel to CD and AB is congruent to CD, prove ABC is congruent to DCB. All right, I have two sides. Hmm. That's all I'm given. So this is me doing a rough draft. Whenever I'm trying to do triangle congruency, I'm thinking four major proofs that I could use. SSS, SAS, ASA or AAS. Now I have my sides. I have a pair of sides. Ooh, BC is congruent to itself. So I have a second pair of sides. So you're eliminated and you're eliminated. These parallel lines, what can I do with that? Oh, when I have two parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. So I can say that I have a side, an in-between angle, and a side. I could use SAS for this. So I'm going to start out with my given, then I'm going to show that BC equals BC, and then I'm going to show that ABC is congruent to C or DCB, yeah, uh, angles. Uh, using the definition of alternate interior angles. So let's write out our given first. Let's write out our given first that AB is parallel to CD and AB is congruent to CD given. It doesn't matter the order that you do these. This is just the order that I discovered them. So I could say CB is congruent to CB. And whenever you say that a line is congruent to itself, that is the reflexive property. Okay, reflexive property. Now I could say that angle ABC is congruent to angle BCD. 
And that is by definition of alternate interior angles. Those parallel lines make this happen. Al alternate interior angles. If your teacher lets you use shortcuts, take advantage of that. Now that I have uh, a pair of sides, check, another pair of sides, check, and the angle in between, I'm allowed to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB, and the reasoning for that is side angle side. So this required a little bit of thought, not too much, but uh, yeah, not so bad, I'm done. Given OM is perpendicular to LN and OL is congruent to ON, prove that these two triangles are congruent. All right, so let's figure out what we have. We are given this that is a side. We are told that these guys are perpendicular which means we are allowed to say that these two angles, and let me use a different color, let me use a different color, let me use a different color. We are allowed to say that these two angles are uh, right, which means we could say that these two triangles are right triangles. Now I have, all right, so if they're right triangles, I have H, A, H, L, L, A, and L, L. So I have the ones involving a hypotenuse. So these guys are out of the question. So I have a hypotenuse. What else do I have? Oh, these guys are the same line. So if I can say that OM is congruent to OM, which I can, that gives me a hypotenuse and a leg. So I'm going to prove that these two are congruent I can show that these two are congruent by HL. So let's go through all the steps. Step number one is the fact that OM is perpendicular to LN and OL is congruent to ON. That's my given. Always start out with the given. Step two is that angle OML is equal, or I'm, well, is, they are equal, but let's, let's do the right angle stuff. OML and OMN both measure out to 90 degrees. So the measure of OML equals 90 degrees, and the measure of OMN is 90 degrees, and this is by definition of perpendicular lines, okay? Which means we are allowed to say that the measure of angle OML is congruent to the measure of angle OMN, and that is through the transitive property. Now, a lot of people might be like, well, why do we have to write out both of those steps? You kind of do. It's dumb, but you kind of do. You have to show that they're 90 degrees, and then you have to show that they're equal. And now that they're equal, you're in good shape. Now, what I can say, let's use a different color, uh, is OM is congruent to OM by the reflexive property. Whenever you say that two lines are exactly the same, because they are the same, you're using the reflexive prop. And since I showed that these guys are right triangles, uh, I showed that I have a or a leg right there and a hypotenuse up here that was given to us. I can say that these two guys are congruent. OML is congruent to triangle OMN, and that's by using the hypotenuse leg postulate. My leg, <laughs> SpongeBob. Remember that? Good times. Given W, U, is parallel to YV, XU is parallel to ZV, 
and Wx is congruent to Yz, prove these two guys are congruent. All right, so these are my congruency rules. I have SSS, I have SAS, I have ASA, and I have AS to the second there. I have congruent sides right there. Okay, so I have an S. Great. What it also gives me is I have two sets of parallel sides, two sets. Now, usually when it gives you parallel lines, you are thinking thoughts of alternate interior angles. Okay, alternate interior angles. These, but you know what? No, I don't want that here because that's not really what's gonna help me. What I'm gonna have is since ZV and ZU are parallel, this acts as a transversal, these two correspond with each other. So these are going to correspond. Similarly, similarly, since these two guys are uh, parallel, these correspond. And so what I have is I have an angle with the side in between an angle I have a S A. So I'm going to state my given I'm going to say that these two angles are uh, congruent because they correspond. These green angles are congruent because they correspond. Therefore, the triangles are congruent from ASA. So, number one is my given. Okay, WU is parallel to YV. XU is parallel to to ZV and WX is congruent to YZ. That gives me my side right there given. Okay, let's go with the red angles. Angle VZY is going to be congruent to angle UXW And the reason for that is the definition of corresponding angles. Ready to kill two birds with one stone? Let's say that in the same exact statement. Why repeat myself? Let's say Z, Y, V, angle Z, Y, V, is congruent to angle X, W, U for the same exact reason. And if you're like, oh, yeah, you could do that in one step, why not? If you have the same exact reason, just give both statements in one. Don't overdo it. Now that I have an angle congruent, an angle congruent, and the side that happens to be in between congruent, I can now say that triangle WXU is congruent to triangle YZV. And the proof that I used for that was ASA. That's it. That was actually friendlier than I thought. I thought it was going to be bad. But the only thing that's bad is Michael Jackson. You know it. It's a song. Look it up. It's called Bad. Rest in peace, Michael Jackson. Well, don't rest in peace, actually. Like and subscribe. Given angle X, Y, W, which is X, Y, W, that guy, weird, is congruent to that guy. I don't know why it just doesn't say that they're congruent. Why did it have to give me the right angles? But oh well, they're, they're right angles. Also, we're told that this guy and this guy are congruent. This is weird. I need to show that these two lines, WX is parallel to ZY. I need to show this. Now, I don't know this. I need to show this. So this is what I'm thinking. This is how my brain operates. There is a rule called CPCTC.
Congruent parts and congruent triangles are congruent. Lots of congruence. What that, no, it's corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Whatever. So what that means is if I give you two triangles that are congruent, I can say that these guys are the same and these guys are the same and these guys are the same. So what I can do, what I can do is if I show that these two triangles are congruent, then I can prove that these angles are congruent, which means I can show that blue plus purple is congruent to blue plus purple, which means by definition of alternate interior angles, I have parallel sides. I know that's a lot. Bear with me. Step number one is my given. Okay. Now my given, once again, gave me two angles. What I have is a shared side. That shared side is going to have to be explained. I have to say, and it's stupid, it's always been stupid, but wy is congruent to wy. And that's the reflexive property. My five-year-old daughter is in the room and she's giving me a stink eye because I said stupid several times. It's a dirty word in this house, isn't it? She's nodding her head, I swear. Um, those of you who are addicted to my YouTube channel, that's the famous Kelsey. Uh, all right. Now I have two angles. Oh, and a non-included side. That's AAS. So I can say that these two triangles, so let's put it in order, uh, Y matches up with W. So let's make sure I say that Y matches up with W, uh, Z matches up with X. So X, Z, and what's left? Um, 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 Y, hold on, Y, Z, W, W, X, Y. And the reason for that is A, A, S. Now, that's maybe we're halfway done. Now, the purpose of me showing that these two uh, sides or these two triangles are congruent is now I can say that these two angles are congruent. These two angles are congruent. So I can say the angle XWY uh, is congruent to angle WYZ. And the reason for that is now that these are congruent triangles is that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay. Okay. Step five. This angle, ZWY, plus YWX equals angle, uh, I did these two, so XYW. plus angle Z, Y, W. Yep. And the reason for that is a bunch of substitution that I did up here without doing a whole bunch of substitution. So my reason for that is substitution property. Since these two guys uh, are the same thing, right? These combine to make alternate interior angles. Maybe let's add one more step. Let's say, let's say uh, ZWX is congruent to XYZ. 
And the reason for that is the angle addition postulate. One letter away from a retirement plan, AARP. And now that we know that, now that we know that these two angles are all completely the same, these two guys are the same as these two guys, now that we know that, I can say that this is parallel to that, thus finishing my proof, let's get a different color, I can say that WX, or uh, yeah, WX is parallel to ZY, and that's definition of alternate interior angles. So this problem wasn't pleasant at all. Not at all. Not one bit. I had fun though, and I said a couple dirty words in the process, didn't I, babe? She's nodding her head. She's she knows she's not supposed to talk during these videos. She just loves to hang out. She loves to soak it in. Either that or for all you know, I'm going crazy and I'm talking to a ghost. <laughs>